Hi everyone and welcome to this video on how to make gradients in Inkscape. Here I'll be demonstrating step by step the basics of how to make gradients, first by using the fill and stroke dialog and second by using the gradient editor. First let us do some housekeeping. To follow along and practice, find download links for the files in the description section below. And second, to make sure you have the same interface like I, first come up here to view and make sure white is selected. Now let us get started. To create simple gradients, you must first have access to the fill and stroke dialog by coming up here and selecting object, fill and stroke, or by using the other possibilities I showed in previous videos. Under the field type of the field and stroke dialog, you can choose between a simple linear or radial gradient. Adding a gradient by this method has the advantage that it is going to choose a default center or start of the gradient for you. So let us go ahead and start by creating a linear gradient on this square. I want you to select the square and come up here to fill flat color and apply a color of your choice and then apply the linear gradient by using this tab. Now you can apply a linear gradient to any type of object. I am going to select this smaller circle now and apply a color onto it and also apply a linear gradient onto it. Perfect. The same way I want you to select the bigger circle and apply a color onto it as well as a radial gradient onto it. And like before, you could apply radial gradients not only to circles but also to any object of your choice, like this smaller square here below. So let us come to editing gradients. Now the gradients you see here are not set in stone. You can change them. One way to do that is by using the Edit Path by Notes tool. I want you to call up the note tool by pressing on this icon or using the keyboard shortcut N and then clicking on the object. You notice you can grab the start of the linear gradient which is this square note here and the end of the linear gradient which is this circle. These are called color stops and they come with added functionalities. Color stops are points in a gradient that define a specific color at that exact location and they allow us to control the progression of colors along the gradient. So we can choose any of these color stops and then go ahead and apply a color to it like so. Grabbing the square and moving it allows you to change the origin of the gradient. Grabbing the node represented by a circle and moving it allows you to change the direction of the gradients. Holding down the control key while moving it will allow you to snap the change in 15 degree increments. Using control and alt will preserve the angle and using control plus shift will scale around the center. Grabbing and moving the circle allows you to change the boundary where the main color fits into the next. And this is how simple you will alter the gradient using the Edit Path by Notes tool. I am going to click now on the artboard to deselect all objects and press S to switch to the selection tool. Now let us see how this works for the radial gradient. I am going to press N to make sure the Edit Path by Notes tool is selected. Then I will click on the circle with the radial gradient and we notice we have a gradient center and focus. We can click and drag and this will change the starting point of the radial gradient. And then this circular node is the radial gradient radius which we can use to change the radius of the color gradient. Now you may wish to reverse the direction of this simple gradient and 
This is where we begin edging into the Create and Edit Gradients tool. First, I am going to give this square a color and a simple linear gradient, then give the circle a color and a simple linear gradient. The gradient tool is this icon down here below. I am going to press on it to call it up or use the keyboard shortcut G. Once it is activated, I can now click on this object. When you do that, you notice the handles seem the same like we had for the Node tool. However, if you look at the Tools control bar up here, you notice this tool gives you more possibilities. For now, I want you to click on any of the color stops for the linear gradient and press Shift R on your keyboard. Perfect. You noticed we just reversed the gradient. Now for the radial gradient, I want you to select any of these stops at the radius and press Shift R. And again, you noticed we have just reversed the color gradient. Perfect. Now we can decide to move the gradient stop or red eye like before to alter how the object looks. I am going now to click on the Add Bot to deselect all objects and press S to switch to the Selection tool again. Now, a second and more flexible way of applying gradients to objects is to use the Gradient tool, which we have started using to reverse the color gradient. Let us see in a bit how that works. I am going to start by pressing on the Gradient tool or using the keyboard shortcut G to call it up. Once we do that, we notice more options we show up here on the Tools control bar. And I have a choice between creating a linear or radial gradient and we have the option Gradient in the field which is permanently on. We have two ways of using the Gradient tool. One way is by double-clicking on the object and the other way is by clicking and dragging on the object. Now let us begin by selecting each of the objects and applying a color to it. Next, press on Create a Linear Gradient up here in the Tools control bar and then double-click on the square object. And next, let us select Create Radial Gradient and double-click on this circular object. And this is awesome. We notice that the gradients created begin from the same origin like when we used the Fill and Stroke dialog. I am going now to click on the Add Bot to deselect all objects and press on S to call up the Selection tool. We actually could have selected the Gradient tool and use it by clicking and dragging on the objects. But the gradient created in this way will not begin at the center or the same origin like before. Now I want you to press on G to call up the gradient tool and let us begin by selecting Create a Linear Gradient. Now I want you to click on the object once to have it selected. Choose a color like say Chateau's Green. Then you can now click and drag to any direction to make a gradient. You can also rotate the path to have the gradient at angles, like so. And like with any path, you can hold down the control key while rotating to have the rotation in 15 degree increments. And when done, click on the board to deselect. Now, I have used a square here to demonstrate so you see the effect of a linear gradient better. However, you can also do the same with a circle or any other shape. Now, I am going to choose Radial Gradient from the Tools control bar. And I am going to click once on the circle to select the object and then give it a color. Next, I am going to come down somewhere to the middle of the circle and I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button while dragging the mouse. Awesome, we have a gradient. I am going to click on the canvas to deselect all objects and press on S to switch to the selection tool. So far, we have been making gradients with only two colors. However, 
You can also add extra colors to your gradient. And we can do this by creating more color stops. So let us begin quickly by applying gradients to the gray rectangle and circle we see here. I am going to press G to switch to the gradient tool and come up here to the tools control bar and select create linear gradient. Then double click on the rectangle to create a linear gradient. I will go again to the tools control bar and select create radial gradient and double click on this circle to give it a radial gradient. Now we notice that when the gradient is turning from gray to white or vice versa, it looks boring. However, we can always customize our gradients with new colors, no matter which color is already found there. Now, looking at the tools control bar on top, we get more information. The tools control bar indicates what kind of gradients the object presently has, as well as the number of color stops. We can use the stops to control the color gradient and to add more color stops. And pretty soon, we'll notice that we can use the stops to control the color gradients and to add more color stops. Now to create a new color stop, first use the gradient tool to select any node on the object, be it at the beginning or the center. I am going to select this square color stop. And we notice that it is selected because it turns blue when I click on it. And once selected, we can insert a new color stop by coming up here and clicking on this plus sign like so. I am going to click again to create one, two, three more color stops. Now that we have new color stops, we can add a new color around each one. I am going to sequentially select the color stops and add colors to each of them by quickly choosing a color here below from the color palette or from the fill and stroke dialog or from any object on the artboard using the color picker tool. I am going to do that and leave gray in the middle because we need it for another demonstration. Next, I want you to select the circle and add more color stop onto it. So you will select the gradient center or any other existing node and come up here and click sequentially to add more color stops like so. And then like before, you can select each of the color stops one by one and apply a different color onto it. Awesome. If we wanted to delete a color stop and it's representing color, let us say the color stop in the gray area here in the rectangle, all we need to do is to click on the color stop to select it. And we know it is selected because it turns blue when we click on it. And once selected, we simply hit the delete button on our keyboard or come up here and choose delete color stop like so. Like before, we can also adjust the angle of the gradient by picking up the gradient end and rotating like so. Holding the control key while rotating will allow us to rotate in fixed increments of 15 degrees like so. And I can also grab the gradient start or this square handle and adjust its position like so. And you see all our changes have been applied on our square. Perfect. Let us now go ahead and see how to adjust the transparency and opacity of a color stop. To do this, you need to select the color stop representing a color and then move to the fill and stroke dialog, which will already be showing the specific color and its attributes. And once here, we can grab the slider of the alpha channel, blur or opacity and pull it up and down to alter the gradient. So I'm going to do this for the alpha channel and you see that the color becomes more and more transparent when the value of the alpha channel is moved below a hundred percent. I am going back now to select each of the color stops I altered 
and pull the alpha channel back to 100%. And while I did this just for the alpha channel, everything I demonstrate here applies for the blur as well as the opacity. Once you have produced the gradients using the gradient tool, you still have the possibility to come up here in the fill and stroke dialog to alter the type of gradient form, like say from linear to radial or vice versa. Now this has been going for long, but just allow me give you two tips linked to working with gradients and we're done. First tip. If you have produced gradients, you can always apply their styles to new objects you created. And this is super easy. First, let us select an object with a gradient. Looking at the fill and stroke menu, you will notice a series of swatches representing the gradient profiles have been created and stored there with numbers. To transfer this gradient to a new object, select the object Go to the Fill and Stroke menu, choose Color, select a gradient mode to open the gradient panel, and click on the swatch with the gradient property you wish to transfer. And this way you could select objects one by one and transfer the gradients by calling up the gradient panel and choosing a start gradient style. And now this begs the question, what if you have hundreds of similar objects to transfer a gradient to? Well, this is super easy. In Inkscape, you always can select objects of the same type and jointly apply an operation to them. So let us select one object that looks like any of the one we wish to change. Then we are going to go up here to Edit, Select Same, Fill, since we have just fill here, then go to the fill and stroke dialog and make sure fill is selected. Choose a gradient option and select the swatch. And this is going to change all the gradient styles at once. And lastly, there is this setting up here, moving gradients in fill or stroke along with the object. If ever you moved an object with a gradient and the gradient is left behind, it is most likely that this button is turned off. To remedy the situation, just press on it and you're good to go. And that was it for this video. Go ahead and have fun creating different types of gradients in Inkscape. If you are interested in the gradient mesh tool, find a link to videos I have made on that in the description section below showing how you can draw photorealistic images, like say of a mango or a banana. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and like this video below. In the next video, we will be looking at color swatch libraries and some good practices on working with colors. I look forward to seeing you then.